Chris here for Thank and Tech and welcome to the channel. And today's video is all about understanding and working with potentiometers. So let's get started now. So what is a potentiometer, you may ask? Well, a potentiometer is a manually adjusted variable resistor with three terminals that is usually utilized to manually or electronically control the current flow. We can say that there are two main family of potentiometers. The most common is the manually adjustable potentiometer. As for the second, it's the automatic one, and it is an electronically controlled potentiometer. The families are then break down further into different types. Let's just jump right into the first family of potentiometer as it is the most common, readily available, and cheaper one. As for the second family, the electronically controlled potentiometers, I do not have any on hand, as well as it will require a video on its own. Who knows, maybe in the future. So without further ado, let's see what are the different types for the first family. The one that we concentrate on today, and it's the most used type of potentiometer, I am sure you are using them often, and it is the adjustable wiper style. They move in angular or circular movement using a knob or a dial, and we call them the rotary potentiometers. And here is a standard icon that represents them in the schematic. They come in different shapes and form factors, but the common thing is that they always have three legs. The two outside legs, here in green and blue, could be either negative or positive, depending on how you hook them up. You have the middle legs here in red, which is the voltage out, most commonly called the out. I will do the analysis with this one as it applies to most of the potentiometers. There is the housing, then we already saw the terminals where the two outer ones are connected to a resistive material. In the middle, there is a shaft that can be either short or long, on which is attached the rotary wiper that takes the reading depending on where it is at on the resistive material. But how does this work, you may ask? Imagine that the resistive material is in fact two resistors, like so, and we will call them R1 and R2, as we are used to that by now. The sum of R1 and R2 is called RT, as in resistance total. The things we have to remember here is that RT is always the same. So, when a potentiometer has a value of 1k, as shown here, this means that RT is 1k, and this implies that R1 and R2 maximum resistance cannot exceed that of RT. Here, in our case, this means that RT is equal to R1 plus R2, or 1K ohm is equal to 500 ohm plus 500 ohms. But when we start to turn the knob, then R1 and R2 will change. And remember here, they will change, but the addition of both values will never exceed that of RTs. In another world, if you want to change the accuracy or the variation of RT, you just have to swap for another potentiometer or use another type. And this brings us to the multiple turn potentiometer, as it is the second type from this family. The multi turn potentiometer allows us, as the name suggests, for multiple rotations, but they also increase the precision of the output value too. The next type from this family is the dual gang potentiometer. They do combine the same benefits as the former, but allow for parallel setting for two channels. After that, we have the concentric potentiometer. This dual potentiometer is made in such a way that the two potentiometers can be individually adjusted by means of concentric shafts that enable the use of two controls in one unit. The next one after that is the servo potentiometer. It is a motorized potentiometer which can also be automatically adjusted by a servo motor. We must not forget about the linear potentiometer where instead of being of a rotary nature, it is instead a wiper style that moves along a linear path also known as a slider, a slide potentiometer or a fader. And lastly, we have maybe the most interesting from this family and they are the membrane or also known as a soft pot. Those thin variable potentiometer can be customized, they also can be either linear or rotational and are often mistakenly compared to a capacitive pressure sensor which look like this. But unlike this pressure sensor here, can tell where the pressure is applied to, which is a big difference. 
Now, the reason why I say earlier that the soft pots are the most interesting, just look at what we follow, and this is what you can do with them. This is from Mr. Kinkas' channel, and yes, he gave me the permission to use his footage. And it works. As usual, you will find the, all the uh, no links coast. down below for the you pressure to find and follow. output is controlling the dynamic section of the no coast, and the ribbon output is controlling the pitch into the one volt proactive input of the no coast. So. And that's the sensor sandwich ribbon controller. Have fun with it. Or even this one from. Yes, that's the name. <laughs> I cannot even pronounce it. Let me know in a comment down below what you think or simply it would be interesting for me to teach you how to build this kind of things. Enough of bubbling now and let's go and build this project. So this is exactly the same setup as last week. We have from the pin A0 to the V out and then R1 and R2 that we will replace by this potentiometer. If you can see here is a 10k potentiometer. So I remove the two resistors like so and I will plug it in. Maybe let me remove everything for us to be able to see, like so. Yes, All right. It doesn't matter. As you can see, the Arduino is not plugged in, so no worries. So we plug in and we need to leave the space for us to be able to hook up the wire. So it is plugged. Now I go with the ground. Doesn't matter, as you know, which side. All right, and now the 5 volt. Uh, make sure you are on the same column, like so. If I can put it in, yes, that's correct. And now I will put the pin A0 into the V out. Yeah, I know it's a little bit bent, but it will be easier for me to plug it in. As you can see, if it focuses, yes, like so. Now I plug the ground into the Arduino, and once this is done, like so yeah it's correct let me set up everything correctly let's just turn on the arduino but you didn't tell me we have to see the program first isn't it so this is a sketch and if you want more information simply look at the video i made last week and explain all the sketch i won't change a single thing i just go into here and see what's happening as you can see we are reading a value now it's zero because the potentiometer is at zero so Let's change that and slightly turn it the other side. As you can see, we can vary from 0 to 5. And if you remember, last week it wasn't that accurate. But with this potentiometer, then it is accurate. To some extent, I have 499 here. <laughs> Let's see how many turns we have with this 10k potentiometer. So I put it back to 0 and now we count. One turn, two turn, not exactly two turn, but about that. Okay, so I'll remove this to put the 1K resistor and we will compare and see the travel and how the voltage fluctuates. I don't know if you notice, but there is still voltage and it still fluctuates without anything attached. So here is the 1K potentiometer. We are going to plug it in now and see what's happened. If I manage to do that. Mm, okay, yeah. All right, and there we are. So this was the previous 10K. I will leave it there like this. You see that <laughs> how it works. And you can see that the reading is all over. So let's uh, steady it and uh, see if I can manage to plug it in better. Like so. Yes, it should be. Let's turn the potentiometer. Yeah, seems to work now. Okay, good. Making sure that we are at zero. We can now try to find out how many turns this one will have compared to the 10k port? Yeah, about four, four or five turns. And if you notice, while I was turning the dial, the range looks a little bit more accurate than the 10k potentiometer. Now that we have done the not so scientific part of the testing, let's see about the code. The read value here, actually, this is our V out. So we can change this to V out like so and everything here have to change of course this one will be not read file but v out so we have v 
out like so and now here I have to change of course the out also let's test the sketch it says it's okay we send this to the Arduino and now we can check there we have it it works the same so today we learn what a potentiometer is what different types are they out there mostly <laughs> Also, how to use and to program them. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. I will do my best to answer them. That is it for today. Please leave a comment down below. And just to let you know, I started the Patreon where, if you want, you can support me. And again, if you enjoy it, you know what to do. You can do your youtube -y things, like, if you want to, subscribe, you may as well. Or you can also press the bell icon if you want to be notified every time I post a new video. However, if you do not like this video, simply leave a comment down below and tell me why it's so. I will try to improve for you guys. Stay safe and bye now!